What's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Jordan and today we're going to be changing the fuel injectors in our Datsun 280Z. So stick around to see how it's done. So even though we've owned the Datsun for almost six years now, one of the only main end items that we haven't done in the car is changing the fuel injectors. So today is going to be an important piece of maintenance, but it's also not going to be that difficult. Why do you have to change your fuel injectors? Shouldn't they just squirt the gas out continuously forever anyway? And the answer is no. Sometimes they can get clogged. Sometimes they can get stuck open. It really depends on how old they are. And each problem can cause different symptoms. If your fuel injectors get stuck open, sometimes it can continuously let out gas, which can make the car run rich and make it smell like gas. But on the opposite side of that, if your fuel injector starts to get clogged, it can start to make more noise and it won't be shooting out as much gas as you need. Therefore, your car is going to be running lean and it's going to be running hot. So changing the fuel injectors is definitely important and doing this can solve a lot of issues or maybe there's some other issues you need, you need to diagnose. But if there's anything to do with gas, fuel, spark, any of that stuff, changing the injectors is always a good idea. Our car actually has multiple of these symptoms. Uh, it smells like gas and on acceleration we get a loud ticking noise from the engine compartment. The ticking noise, I'm not really sure if this is going to be an injector problem, but I'm hoping it will because I've diagnosed a lot of things to try and figure out what that ticking noise is from the engine. And if it's the injector, great, we're going to fix it. And if it's not in the injector, I think we might have some rod knock, which I'm fingers crossed that that's not the problem, but if it is, we'll get to that eventually and we'll diagnose it. But today, I'm hoping the injectors is going to fix all of our problems with the car. So enough of me talking. Uh, let's hop in the car. We're going to go to my dad's house to work on the car today. That's where we started doing work on the project five, six years ago. So that's what we do just about every Sunday. We're going to meet up and we're going to do some maintenance. at my dad's house and we're getting ready to work on the Datsun. So we got my dad here, help us out putting the new injectors in. And first we're gonna go over the plan of what we need to do. Our engine bay is a little bit different than stock because we have this fuel rail here, but it works the same as stock where you just detach the fuel rail right here and right here. It's a little bit different for stock, but then once you detach those and undo all of the hoses right here, 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 as well as some screws leading to the block, you just lift everything off and then put it back together. Going over the parts that we ordered for today's swap, we have the six injectors. These are brand new from Motorsport Auto, as well as new O-rings. These are super important, so that way you don't have any leaks. And you also want to get a fuel filter. Whenever you do work on the fuel system, you want to change the fuel filter. It's just a good practice. Before we start ripping off all of the pieces here, you want to make sure to un disconnect the battery. It's just for safety. You don't want any weird sparks flying around when you're messing with the fuel system. Now that we've removed the screws that hold the old injectors to the head, we can just wiggle these free, start pulling and yanking, and eventually this is all just going to pop right out. Something of, to pay attention to with installing new inje injectors is you really need to keep track of these plastic seats and these flanges here on the originals because you're going to need to use them on the new injectors. Now that we were able to remove the fuel rail, all that's needed to do is to take off these plastic things to collect them for the new injectors, loosen all of these hoses, and then put the new stuff on and then put it all back together and we are done. Sometimes these hoses can be really stubborn and they're perfect for busting knuckles, but um, the best way to do that to get these off sometimes is just to use a knife and cut this here and it'll fall right off and putting the new ones on is really a lot easier. Mm -hmm. 
All right, so with the new injector here and the old one here, you can see the pieces that we have to take off is this plastic seat as well as a flange. Remove those and you're also gonna find old O-rings on the original. And you have to, we have to put these new O-rings on and the old plastic and the old flange. Once you get all of your injectors fitted up with their old equipment, you have to trim the hose here that leads to the fuel rail. Ours just needs about maybe an inch or so. But then once we do that, you're going to take this small O-ring, you're going to take it over to the head. You're going to want to put it right in that hole, right in this hole there where the injector is supposed to go. Because while you're fussing with all the injectors, it's going to be really easy to, to mis misplace these. And you don't want to lose these because this is going to make sure that you don't have any gas escaping into your engine bay. Because we have the injectors out, I wanted to do a little side-by-side -side comparison. I don't know when these were changed last. Maybe they were changed 10 years ago or 15 years ago. But the new ones have a completely different nozzle. And they look way beefy. So really hoping this gives us a good improvement over what we had before. Well, it's hot out here in Las Vegas. We're sweating like crazy, but we got the injectors in and now is the moment of truth where we turn it on and see if we can eliminate some of the fume smell and hopefully that loud ticking noise is gone. We'll see. All right, so while the car is warming up over there, it seems like it's running okay, it sounds good. Uh, but next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump in the car, do a test drive, and we'll be back. All right, guys, so after the test drive, big improvements in the fumes coming from the engine bay, but we're still having an issue with the rattling coming from the engine. So I'm not sure what that is because I did a valve lash adjustment last year and everything should be with inspect and perfect from that front. So I'm really not sure what the problem is. I'm really hoping that it's not some bad rod knock. So maybe you guys can help me diagnose that. I'm gonna play a clip for you of what that sounds like right here. Once again, if you guys can help me diagnose that problem, let me know in the comments. Uh, if you liked the video and enjoyed watching, like and subscribe. There'll be plenty more content just like this in the future. So anyway, thanks for watching and see you next time. My dad wants photo creds. <laughs> Co-mechanic. <laughs>